I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Yeah. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I was just going to about the God will deliver me and I'm going to bless around the corner. 
And finally, I got released last night. I felt like a baby, but I paid for me. I was able to eat and keep it down. I was up all night. Every time my flesh woke me up, I reduced and went back to sleep. I'm thankful. I am so thankful. I walked the floors. I said, flesh, you're not going out the door and wanted to walk from one of the street. I overcame. I went out there for a few minutes. I came right back up. Took myself out of the property, took my coat off, and went back to bed. Amen. Anything could have had me out there. Yes. Dark people wow. walking, yes. fighting, police Come out there, and shooting. Yes. God you. kept us the pain. Yes. You yes. 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 I was not going to I would never let this birthday go by when I didn't think about Ooh, glory, what he did God. for me last night. Thank you. Thank you. That's another step up. You know, I believe one day he's going to give up all of them. Come on, that's yeah. right. Come on, that's 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 right. I'm so thankful. And then, you know, when you pray, I'm thankful, so thankful for prayer. When you pray, you don't know how good that does your soul. Yes. I mean, you feel so encouraged. My you feel God. you're able to take the step with that burden. You know you're going to make it through that day. You just be praying. You listen to your songs. You read the Bible. You walk around your house and talk to them. You clean your house. Get your stuff ready for the day. And I say, Lord, I'm thankful for another day. Just one more chance to praise the Lord. Amen. One more chance to thank the Lord. And there's this song which has got a few verses that says, Pray on just a little while longer. Praise on just a little while longer. Praise on just a little while longer, and it will be all right. I just want to thank and give the Lord a praise for victory in the camp tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I was grateful then this afternoon that God is still saving us. And, uh, not that it's a, the complete work was done. What he did was complete. Now he's completing us. Many today is not aware of the fact that there's still a work to be done. God is working at work. The Bible says there in 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, and uh, <clears throat> verse uh, uh, 9, Paul was making mention of how that there was a sentence of death that was working in them. He said, but we have the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. That's where we're still at today, not trusting in ourselves, not trusting in our ability. It's so easy to trust in your own strength, not trusting the one that God sent to save us. Uh, Matthew 1, said that a virgin was going to conceive and that she was going to bring forth a child. Yes, sir. And his name was going to be called Jesus. For he was going to save his people from their sins. And that was from every phase of it, he was going to deliver us from it. And so uh, here, in, back in 2 Corinthians, where Paul was saying that we had the sickness of death in ourselves, that we shouldn't trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. That's not only the natural dead, but that spiritual dead. Ephesians uh, 2 and uh, verse 1 says that, uh, first of all, before we go there, uh, we need to go to Romans 5 and 12 to find out that you was dead spiritually. Romans 5 and 12 says, uh, wherefore by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. Therefore, sin passed upon how many men? All men. So everybody, because of Adam disobedient, the first federal head, he transferred death to every creature that was born into the world. David said it in Psalm 51. He said, you know I was born in sin. Sixth verse, I think it might be. Uh, he says, uh, uh, verse 5, 
Yeah. Behold, I was shaping in uh, iniquity and sin, and my mother conceived me. So even when he, uh, his mother uh, became impregnated, uh, that was sin because of uh, the penalty that Adam put upon the whole world. And so uh, then we needed someone to uh, deliver us uh, from that. And then we read there in uh, <clears throat> Ephesians uh, 2 and 1, he says, and, and you, and you, has he quickened. That word is to, he made us alive. And you, has he made alive, quickened. Who was where? Dead. dead. Where were we dead at? Yes, Trespasses and in sin. Yes, and it tells us, and it wasn't just only us, he said, in time past, that we all walked in a course, according to the course of this world. Everybody was in the same course. Uh, according to the prince according to the prince of power there, the spirit that now worketh in the children of why is the children of disobedient? Because of our first forefather, he was what? He disobedient and he transferred that to us. He transferred that to us. And so there in Second Corinthians one and ten he says that we have this sentence of death working in us who raises the dead. So uh uh Verse 9 said that but in God which raises the dead, and I said that was the spiritual dead. I gave those scriptures to show us that we were spiritually dead, even though we was functioning, going on like people are doing today. They're dead if they haven't been quickened. Ephesians 2 and 1 and says, And you has he quickened and that is made alive which was dead in trespasses and in sins. And so God raised us, He raised us up. He raised us up with the, with the Spirit of God being put into our life, giving us the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gave us that wonderful gift of life. That's why it's important. It's important that we receive that gift of life. They asked him in Acts 2 and verse 38, after a message had been preached about how they had crucified Jesus and how they had done him, the Bible said that they was pricked in their heart, verse 37, said they was pricked in their heart and uh, asked the question that men and brethren, what must we do? Verse 38 says, repent. We baptize every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins and that you would receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he said this was for you and for your children and the children and them that was where? Far, far off. off. He was referencing us. We was afar off. We was we was afar off from the plan of God, from the offset. Even though we was in the mind of God, biblically we could find show that God always had us in mind, but the Bible says in John, St. John 1 and verse 10 was, I believe that he came to his own. Amen. He was in the world and the world was made by him. Isn't that a mystery? And the world knew, had no relationship, knew him not. They didn't have a relationship. He was right there walking among them. And they didn't know who Jesus was. Yeah. They didn't know he was, I mean, shoe leather. Yeah. Or in sandals or barefooted. He was right there. And they didn't know who he was. He said, and he came to his own. That was from the Jewish standpoint. He came to his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him of his own, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even, here we come, even, that's us, who came in just calling on his name. Praise God to even them that believed, rather, believed on his name. And so we was, came in by faith. By faith. You're going to make this journey today. It's going to have to be by faith. You're going to have to believe the report. And and, and, and so uh, we are, I start out saying that we're in the phases of salvation. We're in the phases of salvation. Second Corinthians 1 and 10 goes on and says, who delivered us, who delivered us from so great a death. Somebody says, 
Why is John 3, 16 written like it is? For God so loved the world. Because Adam had put us in so great a death that it took so great of love to bring us out of that death. Amen. Who delivered us from so great of death. People minimize that fall. They minimize what happened in the garden. But the garden killed every individual. It don't make no different color, creed, background, or pedigree. Yes, sir. Don't make no different what your skin, how faded, how much money you had, you're still dead. Yeah. You're still disconnected yes, from the source of life. Come on. Yeah, amen. And the only way you can be reconnected is by being born again. Born again. Born again. That's what he, Jesus told him in John 3, 16, except a man is born of the water and the spirit. 3 and 5, he can't see the kingdom of God. He can't get into the kingdom of God unless he's born of the water and of the spirit. That's a new birth experience. Praise God. And so, uh, verse, I'm back in 2 Corinthians. Delivered up from so great a death. And watch this. And do it, deliver. Do it today. Do it presently, right now. Do it, right now. deliver. Yes, this is why this is not one of these salvation people saying, I got it here and I'm good for the rest of my life. No, you got it here, but you got to keep on walking in him. Yes. You got to keep the process going. This is not one of those experience here and then. I'm just good. I do what I want to do, and I'm good. You got to keep moving. He delivered us 1979. In, 19, uh, in 2016, hey man, he's delivering right now. He's still delivering. He's still delivering right now. That's why it's a progressive salvation. That's right. It's not, it wasn't all lock, stock, and barrel. It was a progressive work because the race isn't given to somebody to start, but it's to those that end. Yes, we see that in the natural, don't we? Yes, yes, you can get in the starting blocks you want to and the gun can go off and you can make the first step, but if you stop running, you lose that race. Amen. You lose the race. And so uh, he delivered us. And then he goes on in that <clears throat> Ten verse, he says, in whom we trust. That's where I'm at today. I'm trusting. I'm not walking around like I know I got this already fixed and made. I'm trusting that he will yet deliver. And I won't have a blowout down the road. I won't have the grace to fix the flat. That's why it's, it, it, it behooves us and it incumbents every one of us to stay close to God. Don't take any of this for granted. I don't care how good you think you've been and how close you think you have gotten with God. Uh, you need to keep pressing. You need to keep making the right steps, do the right things, and pray that God keep doing what he promised he'll do. Amen. Keep trusting. Yeah. Pray, keep relying. That's what we, we've been mentioning. That uh, this relationship of God is where God rests to you first. <laughs> because you didn't know where to reach to. You not, didn't have a clue, but God rests to you and brought you to him. So now, since he brought me to him, I'm reaching back to him. Yes, sir. Praise God. I'm reaching back to him. Yes. I'm saying, uh, help, Lord. Help, Lord. When I see self, see the working, use a scripture this morning, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, or 15:31, I believe it is, he says that I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. So Paul was dying daily. He couldn't have been talking about, because you ain't got but one natural life. 
But Paul was referring to the things that hindered and things that uh, slowed up his progress. He was dying out to those things. That's why the Colossian, again, Paul writes to the Colossian church in the third chapter and verse uh, uh, one, he said, if you've been risen with Christ, three and one, he said, if you've been uh, risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. Amen. For ye are dead, for your life is hid with Christ in God. See, we, we've, we've had our life uh, 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 tucked away in Christ. Right. He says it's hid with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Now he tells us here, I'm talking about I die daily. He says, mortify. Sure. Give me to get that word for everybody. He's saying here that this is something that we die. Mortify means we need to put out of existence, die. We need to subdue, mortify, deaden. He says, deaden. Do away with, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Now, he's not talking about this earth out here. He's talking about these earthly houses. Right. He's talking about this earthly mud hut. Uh -huh. to, to, to kill things that's there. Because he's dying daily now. That's why I said this is a progressive salvation. Yes, sir. Yeah. You don't kill all this in one day. No. <laughs> oh, no. All these bears and gorillas and, uh, 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 amen, uh, leopards and, you know, there's all kind of animals working here. Yeah. But God is killing out all of that until he can kill and until everything is dead but the lamb. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. All these others, uh, preachers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All these other activities roaming in this earth. That's what he said. He said, the members which are upon the earth. Then he began to tell you some of them fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Amplifier says, so dead, deprive of power, the evil desires lurking in your members. Those, I didn't know they said that. Those animals' impulses <laughs> and all that is earthly in you, that is. Uh, that is employed in sin, sexual vice, impurities, sensual appetites, unholy desires, all greed and covetousness, at, for that is idolatry, the defying of self and other created things instead of God. So we, we've got these things that's lurking. Just constantly roaming. And, and so it takes a, a daily process to deaden or to die daily to these, these appetites. Praise God. It's been 1979 and we, we still been slaying these beasts. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 18. Solomon says that God will let man know that he is a what? That he's a beast. See, man needs to know that he's a beast. And as one dies, so dies the other. He was talking there about the soul of man. That when he dies, he dies like a dog die if he don't have Christ in his life. There's no resurrection for animals. But he wanted to identify us with beasts. Our animal-like passions and desires. And so we're to kill out those things. We're to die daily from those things. And so that's why it's a process, a progressive work that's taking place in every one of our lives. And so when God reaches towards us, we got to reach back towards him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See? God reached toward me in 1979 and and I don't want to take any credit for that because it was strictly, I was a strict dead man and no dead person can do anything to assist in his resurrection. 
You've never seen a dead person do anything to help himself. But God, yeah. oh God. Oh God. reached down there and touched me and raised me up. Thank you. When I recognized what happened, the boys knocked on the door the next day. I told them that, that same day, that afternoon, I says, uh, y'all go ahead, I'm through. I said, go ahead. He said, what's wrong? I said, I went to church. So what? I said, no, man, something happened to me. Something happened. See, I didn't know that then, but something was reaching back towards God. Amen. See, that what had happened caused me to reach back towards Amen. that affection, that feeling, that, that experience was caused me to reach back to what happened to me. Amen. 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 And I said, y'all go ahead. I said, in fact, I think I'm through. Y'all have to understand for me to say I'm through and all the stuff that was going on, there was a lot of death that took place right there at all to that day. Hallelujah. But somebody getting to reach back. And from that point, I was going home like he told me to do that night, going to bed and going to church. I was, I was making some efforts back to this experience that I had. I can't tell you how, I, all I can tell you that that all the paraphernalia and you can name it, you won't hardly miss nothing. It's gone. It's gone. You're talking about a class of A, A, N, A, and all the other A's. But something inside of me, are you following me, begin to reach back. I kind of like Paul. Paul said, I want to know him. Hey, Lord, boy, shot. Paul was on the road to Damascus. He was doing his thing. Going to get letters from the priest. Come on. To kill everything in jail and, 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 and put in jail everybody that called on the name of Jesus. But a light shone from heaven. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible said it was brighter than a noonday sun. Whether he was walking, whatever beast it was, whether it was a beast he was riding, or I just told you, man, is a he knocked him off that beast. That's why I really believe he went to the ground on. Who are you? Who are thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus. Whom you are persecuting. Come on. When you mess with the people of God, you mess with Jesus. And when he got up from there, make it long story short, he couldn't, he didn't have no sight, and he told him to go down the straight street, and there was a man down there by the name of Ananias. He said, so when he's gonna get down there, he's gonna lay hands on you that you can receive your sight. When he got down there, just like God said, Ananias told God on the other end, though, he said, Man, I heard about this guy, he's killing everything. Locking up everything that's uh, getting put in prison, everything to call on Jesus. And God said, don't worry about him. I got him praying. <laughs> He's a chosen vessel of me. I done laid my hands on him. <laughs> See, God done rest towards him. He, at that time, was Saul, which meant ditch. God changed his name to Paul, which means little. Uh -huh. When God gets through, uh, He got to make you small. Yeah. But God, this great man, this great uh, Sanhedrin uh, participator, this this guy who was so smart, you read about, he didn't know who he thought he knew. And if God never rests towards him, he would have never knew who he was. Amen. That's right. You don't just go to God. You just don't come to God. It's like we used to play that game, Father, may I? And when he rests towards him, my point is, let me not get stuck. He said, I want to know him. Yeah. Let me say that. Philippians 3, after that experience, he said, I want to know him. And I want to know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering, and be made conformable to his death. He said, if by any means I might obtain unto the resurrection of the dead. 
And then experience calls you to reach towards him. Experience just calls you to interact. Amen. As I said, when a relationship, when you're dealing with somebody, when they interacting with you, you interact back. And that's why, <clears throat> regardless of a relationship that may have been already in existence, when you stop reaching, that relationship get cold. It cools off. And not long, it breaks off. Because somebody is not continually reaching. I've seen some reach and then some fail to reach back. And finally, they get tired of that same cold shoulder. This is a relationship. That's why this progressive work, you got to keep working on it. It's been 40 plus years, but you just got to keep working on it. We've had our ups and we've had our downs, but you got to keep reaching and keep it alive. Yeah. I tell people you gotta you gotta interact with God. Hmm? And he knows when that old when that old smack stuff, uh, you know. No, he He wants you to interact. He wants some affection involved with that. Set your affection on things above. He knows when you're interacting. Praise God. He you know when you're involved? And this is what is being stimulated. This is what he wants to continue. It's a relationship. That's why I can't nobody. This is called foolishness of preaching. He, 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 he uses, I'm just a mouthpiece. Here, what you're hearing now is God talking to you. Because you can't hear without him. And you can't he preach, he can't preach except he's been. So God has to have instruments. He's always had a mouthpiece. From the old covenant, he had prophets that spoke to Israel. Because he this is what he used to let Israel know what he was feeling. What he was thinking. And you had to interact with that. When they gave him the command, when he gave them the commandment, they had to interact with that, interact with that. That's why coming to church, coming in the fellowship is important. Yes, sir. Praise God. Because you are hearing something, something is being touched, something is being affected in you. Yeah. Because you're hearing what God is saying to you. That's why when you come here, don't be doing all this here because it, it ain't for all, it's for you. The word of God comes to us, even though we may be here collectively, and out of the collective, God is talking to each and every one of us individually. People sit here sometimes and think it's just all the way for somebody else, but no, you need to find a rake and bring it in. You've been shoveling too much. Come on, come on, come on. We got to rake this in. Find out what you're saying to me. What do you want from me? I know you saved me back here in 1979, and I and I know you're saving me today, and I'm trusting that you're going to yet deliver me. Amen. I'm trusting in that. Praise God. I'm not trusting in myself. No. Because I know how man do. What man do, what we do, we cool off. We run through space and then we cool off. And God set a fire up on them. We, we run a little bit more. That's humanity. That's humanity. But that's why you just got to keep it going. Now watch him. Stop, stop trying to run it all in the, the hundred. It, it, all at one time. One step. But you're not going to do it. It ain't in you. Get in a race and just get a good pace. Amen. And keep the pace. Keep the pace. Keep the pace. You're going to make it. Do like the old hair did. Just get out there and just keep moving. 
You like the rabbit. <laughs> 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 Just kept on moving. Just kept on that. Kept that pace going. And he made it. He made it. He kept reading his Bible. He kept worshiping. Amen. He kept uh, 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 coming to church. He kept doing what God said. He kept supporting the work of God. He kept just kept doing all those those the little things. The little big thing. He just kept doing all the little things. And he looked up down and he was way down the road. Kept loving his brother. In spite of good times and bad times. Because all of these are trials. All these things are difficult. And God going to try you to the end. God going to try you, try me to the end. He going to make sure every one of these scriptures are fulfilled. In our lives. Yes, sir. Amen. You're not going to slide by one. You ain't going to have that rich you ruler spirit. What must a do that had eternal life? He says, you know the, uh, what it says, keep the commandments. Well, I've done that for my youth up. He said, thou shalt not bear with false witness, come in a dog, da, 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 da. He said, I've done that. He said, well, go sell all you got then. Go sell all what you got and give it to the poor and you have it. Treasures of heaven. The Bible said he turned away sorrow because he had great possession. You know, sometimes we turn around because we got great possessions, and it ain't necessarily the dollar bills either. But there is things that we hold on to. You know what made Lot wife turn around? Possessions that she had there in Sodom. Hmm. Grandkids, yeah, children. They don't tell what else back there either now. It was Sodom. <laughs> so, you know. and some of you that have been taught the word of God, have been taught over from here all the way up here, and now we live in this liberal society. This Everything is all right, society. Whichever way you like it is all right. You're not careful. You'll be looking back, too. The law of God ain't changed. He said, I'm the Lord, thy God, and I. He's not changing. Because the liberals and Conservatives and all the other folks that doing what they want to do and allowing. I still believe it's right. Yes, sir. After 40 plus years of involvement, uh, 40 years of involvement, uh, I found this book is to be right. Yes. I prove this. It's not an old book. It's a book that already knew the end from the beginning. It's going to prove out. Everything he said will come to pass, and that's why Armageddon is on his way. World War III is on his way. Yes, sir. That's why America is getting ready for a, a bloodbath. Right. And everybody that's in the world, love not the world. neither the things that's okay. And that's our challenge today. And I'm telling you, the world is showing up all around us and close. Jesus prayed that, Father, you keep it from the evil that's, that's in the world. This is our responsibility today. Do what we're doing. Just to encourage and let you know that <clears throat> this is still is a, a continuation of <clears throat> serving God. And it'll make no difference who you are, who you think you are. You can miss God. If God don't hold you in a lot. Amen. That scripture says he holds our feet in life. Psalm 66. 
And I'm stopping. Glad to have Brother Ad Doe here. Glad to have all our visitors with us today. Psalm 66 and 9. Verse 8 says, oh, bless our God, you people. And make the voice of his praise to be heard. Which holdeth our soul in life. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Holdeth our soul in life. And suffer not our feet to be moved. I so appreciate it. Because enough wind and blue in this world. Enough storms will come. <laughs> These scriptures start coming. I've got to sit down. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He held our feet right there on the rock. If enough flood, wind, and Rain and came and we've been washed away already. But God. It is He that is making us. I thought I said made us. Well, you can say that for God because God said the things that are not as though they were. But the reality is, He's making us. He's making. We don't look like Him yet altogether. So he said, let us make man an hour and after hour. And so he's still making man. Even though he said he made man, we are the sheep of his pasture. It is he that's made us and not we ourselves. It still is he that's making us and we not ourselves. Praise God. Praise God. Glad for visitors being here with us. He gave her a name here. Susie. Glad for being here with us. And, amen. Get a chance to give us have something to say here at the work. And good to see folks back from school. Look like Hannah. But been having glass problems with it. Yeah, that's Hannah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> amen. Everyone that's in here tonight, good to see uh, Sister Dorothy and her family here. Amen. She's still. Standing in here. Nobody can do this but Jesus, y'all. When I say that, don't miss, don't get it all screwed up. I said there was some what going on? Interaction. Interaction. Don't miss it. Some interaction. But you can't miss him when he acting. Hmm? You can't miss him when he's acting. Praise God. Bet you've been on the ship. Working in the day, glad to have him back. Others downstairs working for dinner today after service. Everybody stay for dinner. Man. Fellowship. We don't do it too often. We a lot of times do it every week, but I couldn't stand to see him all these spots. I miss it like that every week. We do it every now and then. Amen. But it's called communion, fellowship. As much as you don't think you do. If you don't stay in the proper communion, you get dislocated. Get to your little island, you get to your little click. This is my click in case you don't know it. This is my click right here. It is, this is my click. I click when I get around you all. I don't click out there no more. I ain't clicked out there for 40 years. I don't. Don't, don't. Check the record. When he brought me out, he brought me in. Praise God. I went, my 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 uh, affiliation is uh, dropping seeds. That's why I'm not involved in all the other stuff that goes on. They said you ought to be all. Don't tell me what I ought to be in. I'm in what God said for me to be in. I ain't in all that stuff out there. Amen. I'm going to let God handle that. God got control of the world. Jesus got the church. I'm going to let him handle that. I'm doing a good job just trying to do what he told me to do. Not get involved with all that out there. That's too big for me. That's a job for Jesus out there. Amen. All right. Let's see what else God would have for us. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. I think Maya is going to come from the nursery. Thank you. What? Uh, Maya, she's going to help us sing a little song. Give me the paper. You don't have to worry, and don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning, troubles they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless his wonderful name. The Lord is good. And all the time, the Lord is good. Thank you. Amen. Glad to be here this afternoon with God's people in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Amen. Uh, thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercies. Sorry, I came in a little bit late. I went to Kalamazoo with Brother Chaplin this morning. It's about an hour from there. So I left at 1.30 and uh, the Lord was merciful. I wasn't too late. I wasn't too late. I appreciate the words I heard. Uh, Brother Adams, when I grow up, I hope to be able to preach like Brother Adams. When I grow up. <laughs> hey, praise God. And I don't sing. I'm not, a, I'm not a double barrel preacher like Brother Adams. He can preach and he can sing. <laughs> To, to God be the glory. Yes. Amen. <coughs> that was a wonderful song you we were just singing. Yes. Uh, I know I can make it. I know that I can stand. Yes. Because of His grace. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Praise God. I know that I can make it. I know that, that I can stand. Because of the Lord's mercies, because of His grace, because of His awesome power. And for those that do not know me, I'm just uh, a young man from Africa, Nigeria, West Africa. Nigeria is the largest black nation in the world, population wise. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, my ancestors were left in Africa, and hence my name, Ade Adedoja. I probably would have been named Albert or John if uh, my ancestors came over here, but I was left in Africa. So that's why Ade Adedoja is my name. I live in Omaha, Nebraska, the land of the corn huskers. And if you do not know, Nebraska is a small state. You have more cattle in Nebraska than people. So if you want to know about cattle, come to Nebraska. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. I want to speak to us this afternoon on a very important subject. I don't want to put anyone on a guilt trip, but uh, but Adams has been talking about this interaction with God. You know, God has reached down to us and he expects us to reach up to him. We're going to make it. Yes, we're going to stand. But there are certain things that we have to do if we are really going to make it. If we are really going to stand, it calls for a serious response on our part. Serious action. Now, we said yesterday that... Uh, it is God working in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? As Brother Adam said yesterday, he's worked it in. God, by his spirit, has worked it in. Mm -hmm. And now we have to work it out. We have to work it out. And yes, we need his help. We need God's assistance. We need God's ability, but there are certain things we need to do to tap into what uh, God has for us. As you know, God's perfect will is not always done. As powerful as God is, his perfect will is not always done. And that was why when the Lord told, when the Lord was teaching his disciples how to pray, one of the petitions was, Thy will be done on earth, in earth. Or in earth, as it is being done in heaven. Right. So if God's will was always done <coughs> on earth, there'll be no need to pray that prayer. Because there's the perfect will of God, 
and there is the permissive will of God. There are certain things that God has decreed. It will happen. It will happen. Yes. And there are some desires the Lord has. So his desires, that's where there's a question. If God has decreed something, it's going to happen. I mean, Jesus Christ came to the earth as per God's decree. He died on the cross. He was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. In spite of all the persecution and opposition, God's decree was accomplished. But there are certain things that may not happen if we do not clear our part. And you see that even in the Old Testament, where some kings will perish simply because they did not do what God wanted them to do. It wasn't God's absolute plan for them to perish because the prophet came and gave them instruction, do this, do that. But because they were stiff-necked, they resisted the Spirit of God. It resulted in them perishing. So God help us to play our part so that our fate uh, does not become as theirs. And what I want to speak to us today is on the subject of prayer. Prayer is one of the key ways the Bible has given us to interact with God. To interact with God, to tap into those treasures that will help us make it. That will help us stand. That will help us stand. Because, you know, we can tell a lie and you can sing a lie. Amen? Amen. We can tell a lie and we can sing a lie. Because words, like they say, uh, talk is cheap. Amen? Yes, sir. But actions need to follow our singing and our talking. So this subject of prayer is so, so important. We may not make it if we're not praying. We may not make it if we're not praying. The priority of prayer. The priority of prayer. I want us to go through some verses real quick. I want us to see how important the Lord Jesus Christ thought of prayer. You go to Mark chapter 1, verse 35. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 35. And this is the life of Jesus. It says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. Yeah. And there prayed. Very early in the morning, he rose up a great while before day. He went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Amen? Amen. Amen. You go to Matthew. Matthew chapter, chapter 14, verse 23. Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone, talking to the Father, his Father, interacting with his Father. You go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 16, I believe. The Gospel of Luke chapter 5, verse 16. It says, And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Pray. And prayed. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. The God-man. He found it important to pray. <clears throat> the Lord Jesus Christ prayed. How much more? Us. He always did the will of his father. That's right. Why? Because he was praying. He was talking to his father. He received instructions.
from his father. That's right. right. And that was why he completed his mission. He completed the task his father gave him because he was always praying, praying, praying. The priority of prayer. If we go to in Colossians, Colossians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4, Paul, in writing to this church, in Colossians chapter 4, beginning in verse, let's see here, verse 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Even in this verse, we can see that this church was praying. That was why Paul wrote, continue in prayer. Amen. He did not say start, but continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Never be vigilant. Be vigilant. The Lord Jesus Christ taught his disciples to pray. Right. You know, of all the things that they could have asked Jesus to show them. Remember, he raised the dead, he healed the sick, he stilled the wind. Speak about Christ. The only thing the apostles asked the Lord Jesus was, teach us how to pray. Because they observed that it was so effective, or to use Brother Adam's word, so efficient because of his prayer life. Yes, sir. Because of his prayer life. He stayed in touch with the Father. Yes, sir. In other words, we cannot afford not to pray. Yes, we cannot afford not to pray. Yes, we have to make time to pray. Yes, we have to take time to pray. Yes, if we are going to be effective, if we are going to be efficient, if we're going to walk in the spirit, you know, his words are spirit. The Lord's words are spirit. If you want to walk in the spirit, you need his words. You need his words. And when I say his words, not only what's in scripture, which is important, but also there are certain words he will whisper into your ear, certain things that are customized for your life. Back when it comes to decision making in life, you know, life is about decisions. Yes, sir. Day by day, decisions, decisions. And if you are in the flesh making decisions, obviously you're not going to fulfill the Lord's will, Amen. the Lord's plan for your life. That's right. Like I said earlier, God's perfect will is not always accomplished. Not always. But as we pray, we can get a hold of God's plan, individual plan for our lives. And as we follow through, we will bring more glory to God. More glory to God. More honor to God. More praise to God. God help us. The priority of prayer. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. In other words, it ought to be a way of life. A way of life. All through scripture, all the new, it's about prayer. You see, Nehemiah, who wanted favor with God, he needed favor with the king. He prayed and he fasted. And the Lord did the miraculous. Daniel prayed and fasted. And we all know what the Lord showed him in Daniel chapter 9. Ezra, who was a scribe, wanted to go to Jerusalem. And he recognized how much power God had. He chose to pray and fast instead of asking the king for some gods to help to protect them. And they prayed and they fasted. And God took them safely to Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Remember Esther? Back then, this... Uh, Wicked man, Haman, was trying to exterminate uh, the Jews. 
and they called a fast and they prayed. And we all know what happened. God spared his. Excuse me, there's too much talking back there. If they got conversation, they can go outside with that conversation. God spared his people because they prayed and they fasted. Even though I'm talking about prayer, implied in prayer is also fasting. Yes, sir. It's also fasting. Yes, sir. And they went to Jesus, I believe it's in Mark chapter 2, and they said, How come the disciples of John fast, but your disciples do not fast? And the Lord, I'm trying to paraphrase, the Lord said, uh, when the bridegroom is in their midst, they don't have to fast. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be removed from their midst. Yes, and then they will have to fast. Yeah. Yes, sir. They yes, will sir. have to fast. Yes, sir. Now, us, if you want to get a hold of God, you need to pray. Right. And you need to fast. Yes. If you want to get deep revelation, I'm not talking about rewriting scripture. I'm talking about your own personal life. Yes, sir. Direction, yes, sir. guidance. Yes, sir. We need to pray. The priority of prayer. The priority of prayer. We cannot afford not to pray. Amen. We have to make time to pray. Yes, Our life depends on prayer. Yes, Our life depends on prayer. I mean a conversation with God. Hallelujah. That's what prayer is. A conversation with God. Yes, Talking to God. Recognizing that our God is not dead. He listens and he responds. That's right. Not always in the way we expect him or we want him to, but he will respond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If we are listening. Yeah. Yes, sir. If we are listening. God told Jeremiah, I believe in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, call upon me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. Yeah. That you do not know. Right. Call upon me. That's what the Lord told uh, Jeremiah. Great and mighty things that you do not know. Amen. You know, in life, there are certain things that cannot be changed by prayer. And there are certain things that will be changed by prayer. Yes, Unfortunately, it's hard to tell the difference. And that's why you always have to pray. Because you never know what will change from what won't change. Because as we know, prayer doesn't change everything. Prayer doesn't change every situation. There are, time, there are times when prayer will change you for that situation. Just like the Apostle Paul, I think I mentioned this yesterday, who had the thought in the flesh, the message of Satan. He pleaded with the Lord three times. And the Lord said, my grace will be sufficient for you. In other words, his circumstance did not change, but he changed. Yes. He changed. And then he went on to say, most gladly, I rather boast in my infirmities, reproaches, necessities, and some other stuff, that God's power may rest upon him. So he didn't get angry. He didn't get upset. He had just his attitude. Just in the case, just like in the case of the Lord Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed with his Father, "If it's possible, let this cup pass." He knew God had the power to change the situation. That's why he pleaded with God, "If it's possible, pray with his Father. If it's possible, let this cup pass for me." And then he went on to say, "Nevertheless, not my will, but." Thine be done. Yeah. And as we know, the cup did not pass. But God, his father, sent him angels yes, to strengthen him yes, so that he completed the mission. So prayer may not always change your circumstance or your situation, but there are times when prayer will change you for the circumstance, for the situation. The power to your prayer the priority of prayer. And then secondly, the plan for prayer. And that is where many of us stumble. The plan for prayer. If you do not have a plan, you're failing, you're gonna fail. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. 
If you ask folks, is pray important? They will say, yes, it is important. But if we are not praying, we're not fooling God, we're fooling ourselves. We're fooling ourselves. So there has to be a plan. There has to be a plan. We saw earlier, Jesus got up early in the morning. Some people can't get up early in the morning. But there's midday. There's night time. Amen? Amen? So we must have a plan. We need to have a conversation with God. Say, Lord, help me to come up with a time when I can talk with God. A time when you're fully alert. Because if you believe that God is listening to your prayer, if you believe that God still talks to his people today, you don't want to have a serious conversation with someone when you're tired, where you start missing out on important stuff. You want to be fully alert. Just like if you're studying for a test. You don't start studying for a test when you're kind of sleepy or drowsy. Because you want to retain the information. Amen. So you want to be fully alert. So I'm asking the Lord to help us. Yes, Lord. Help us. Come up with a time when we're fully alert. So we can talk to God. So we can talk to God. So coming up with a plan is very important. Whether it is morning, afternoon, or evening, or night time, the important thing is to talk to God. The time doesn't really matter. Talking to God one on one. I'm not talking about family time, which is wonderful, or corporate time at church. That's wonderful. I'm talking about one on one. Because God doesn't often deal with people collectively. There are times when God wants you just by yourself. Amen. So he can talk to us. Come up with a plan. Very important. Come up with a time. Plan. Come up with a place. A place. That's also important. It's a place. If you go to work, you go to the same place every time until maybe you get another job. When it comes to prayer, it's often refreshing if you have a particular place. So when you go, God knows you've come to talk to him. God knows you've come to talk to him. Looking for a place in the home, even if it's the closet, where God looks forward to you coming as you look forward to going there, to that place. Having a place, very, very important. Whether it be on a separate chair or something that is dedicated, consecrated to talk to God. It could be the restroom. The important thing is to come up with a place. If it means going to the woods someplace or some quiet place where there's no interruption. No interruption. Where the cell phone can be turned off. Because your time with God is, that's the most important time. What's the point in time? Because decisions, our life, depends on God. And if we believe that God has all power and all wisdom, we're not doing ourselves any good by neglecting time with God. I mean quality time. Not this drive through kind of prayers. Or 911 prayers, there's a place for that. 911 prayers, Lord help me right now. There's a time for that. But God wants us to have this habit, addiction, coming to Him, looking forward to spending time with Him on a consistent basis. On a consistent basis. Because when you come up with the time and you lock it down, God looks forward to you coming and you look forward to. To, uh, to meet him with the Lord as well. And you'll be amazed at what God will do over time, over time, over time. God starts to give you wisdom, knowledge, begins to order your steps. Because every bad thing that happens to us is not ordained by God. Every bad thing that happens is not ordained by God. Some bad things are happening because of prayerlessness prayerlessness. Yes. Because God wants to get involved in every aspect of your life. Every aspect. Even the things that we may call secular. Every aspect. But if we see God as he sees us, 
and we start relating to him one on one, you'll be amazed how God will give you nuggets here and there. Amen. There are a lot of things in life won't be a surprise. My Even when someone betrays you, Amen. God will kind of whisper yes. that something's going to happen. Yes. yes, I love you, but this is for your good. I'm not going to change it even though I have all power. This is what I'm talking about. That when you start talking to God and God can trust you some, God will begin to deposit stuff in your brain, giving you direction, impulses, inner promptings. And as you follow through, you will see that, oh, this is God. This is God trying to help you. This is God trying to keep me out of trouble. The priority of prayer. The plan. Very, very important to come up with a plan. Because if we do not come up with a plan, we are fooling ourselves. We're fooling ourselves. If you're going to go to work tomorrow, depending on what time, if you know that you cannot trust your body to get up at the right time, you get an alarm clock. Amen? Amen. Get an alarm so you can get up and make sure you're there on time. And it's the same principle with God. God is more important than our job. Yes. More important than family and all the other stuff. Amen. If you're properly connected to God, you'll be of better use to your family. Yes. The church and even on the job. Absolutely. People will know that there's something different about you. Because of God's help. Because of God's assistance. Because of God's grace. Because yes. if you want to tap into God's grace, it will take prayer. It will take prayer. Part of humbling ourselves is praying. Praying. Because if we're not praying, it's a form of pride. We're saying, oh, I've got it covered. I don't need God's help. So you really express your humility by praying. By praying. We have to come to the point where we recognize that we can't even walk Without him holding our hand. Without him holding our hand. And that takes prayer. Much prayer. Serious prayer. Serious prayer. And what's the purpose for praying? We all need forgiveness. Amen? We all need forgiveness. That's one of the reasons to pray. Say, Lord, help me. Do not let sin hinder what you want to do in my life. Confession of sin. If you, want to, if you want to live a holy life, you need God's help. It takes more than willpower. We need God. And that's part of the conversation we have with God. Lord, cleanse me from this. Lord, deliver me from this. Whatever it is, it may be small in our eyes, but in the eyes of God, it is big. If you want to develop a passion for obedience, it will take prayer. Say, Lord, help me to keep your word. Lord, put me in the right mindset to appreciate your word. To appreciate your word. If you want to develop your relationship with God, intimacy with God, it will take prayer. If you want to have a positive outlook on life, there are kind of bad, if you watch the news, there's bad news everywhere. If you're not praying, it's impossible to have a positive outlook on life, on events. Prayer. If you want to grow in Christ, it will take prayer. If you want to be a productive Christian, productive Christian bearing fruit, it will take prayer. If you want power from God, power to live right, power to forgive, Power to forgive folks. Power to live holy. It will take prayer. If you want God's perspective on issues, it will take prayer. It will take prayer. So everything you expect to become in Christ requires prayer. Prayer, prayer. If you want to do the will of God, it takes prayer. If you want your faith to go the distance, it will take prayer. Because there are too many giants in the land. And we need God's help. We need God's assistance. Prayer. Very, very important. 
the priority of prayer, the plan for prayer, the place for prayer, the purpose for prayer. I want to go to this passage real quick as I close here. In Matthew chapter, this chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. I believe it's 21. Matthew chapter 21. 21. Matthew chapter 21. Verse 12. Verse 12. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them it is written my house shall be called the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves his house in the Old Testament was a temple but now under the new covenant under the new dispensation he lives in people by his spirit you know the kingdom of God is the rule of God in the hearts of men and women that's his kingdom it's within you it's within you so your temple your body is the temple of the living God. Right. If the temple of the living spirit should be a house of prayer. Amen. Not a den of thieves. You know what a thief does? A thief steals what does not belong to him or her. Your life belongs to God. Do not be a thief. Yield to God. Surrender to God. Let him possess you so that he can rule and dominate. Let him become the president of your life. Not just the resident, but the president yeah. calling the shots. That was why the Lord said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. Because as we deny himself, he can take residence and rule, dominate, control. Because we belong to him. We do not own ourselves. We belong to him. We have been bought with a price. With a price. With a price. So let him get the glory by yielding to him. It is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. A den of thieves. You know, the Lord Jesus is always in the business of purifying his temple. Back then, he went there, folks who were doing things that did not belong, he kind of uh, overthrew tables because his goal was holiness. Holiness. And the Spirit of God will start doing the same thing in your life and in my life. Removing junk, things that do not belong. Things that do not belong. Because his ultimate goal is for you and I to be holy. Yeah. Verse 14. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. And he healed them. He healed them. Verse 15. And when the chief priests. And let me go back to verse. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. And he healed them. And there's a principle here. When you start praying, when you start praying, you will start healing folks. I don't mean necessarily physical healing, but your words will comfort people. Your words will console people. Your words will bring hope to people. Hope to people. Because God, as Brother Adams was saying earlier, you become his mouthpiece. You become his mouthpiece. Your words encourage, your words inspire people to live this life because you have been praying, receiving instruction from above. God is blessing you with wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom. 
Someone said wisdom comes with age, but sometimes age comes by itself. Like, wisdom comes with age, but sometimes age comes just by itself. There's a difference between growing up and growing old. Amen? Prayer will make us grow up, not just grow old. Grow up. God help us. When you start praying, when you become a house of prayer, then you become a house of power for God. A house of power for God. You start touching lives. Lives everywhere you go. Touching lives. When you speak, people are healed. People are set free. You get to the situation where you make believers think. You make believers think. And you make thinkers believe. You make believers think. And you make thinkers believe. You know, one thing about this message, you cannot talk anybody into believing this message. But you can make people think. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I need to make some changes in my life. Maybe I need to make some adjustments in my life. A house of prayer. Become a house of power. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. And he healed them. Now, I know back then this was physical blindness, physical lameness, but many are blind today. Spiritual. Spiritual. You can have sight, but lack insight. You can have sight, but lack insight. Because sight is a function of the eyes, but insight is a function of the heart. Function of the heart. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, new creature. Not the outside, but the inside. New desires, new goals, new aspirations, new hope. A new way of thinking. A new way of living. Because of the Spirit working on the inside. Verse 15. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were so displeased and said unto him, Hearest what, hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yet have ye, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings? Thou hast perfected praise. So you go from a house of prayer to a house of power to a house of praise. And everything starts with prayer. House of prayer to a house of power to a house of praise. Praise, praise. It's a lot easier to praise God when you see God moving mightily in your life. I don't mean it, I'm not saying it changes every circumstance, but when he chooses not to change your circumstance, he gives you grace. So you see his fingerprints all over your life. His fingerprints all over your life. Because he wants to help us. He wants to change us. Little by little, day by day. In every way, he wants to change us. Because he's a good guy. So we go from repentance to redemption to rejoicing. House of praise. Repentance to redemption to rejoicing. So the Lord is challenging us today to take prayer more seriously. If you're going to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, it will take prayer, not just talk. It will take quality time. Quality time. Quality and quality time. Because if you truly love someone, you spend time with them. Quality time. Many of us, if someone comes to visit you, you know that you don't start sleeping. I mean, even naturally, it's kind of rude. If someone is talking to you and you fall asleep. So can you imagine if you're talking to God, you're kind of drowsing, kind of in and out. We need to honor God. We need to give him respect. 
and treat him way more than we treat even our loved ones. Because our life is in his hands. Our times are in his hands. So the priority of prayer, take time to pray. Make time to pray. Your life, the life of your family members, may hang on your prayer life. Your life and the life of your family members may hang on your prayer life. Make time to pray. Come up with a place where you can meet with God on a daily basis. I don't, I'm not saying become religious. If you miss it, just get back on schedule. But if you can come up with a fixed time, lock it in. You'll be amazed what God will do. It is no secret what God can do. What is done for others, He'll do for you. One thing about God is you get, I mean, if you invest your time, you will see the hand of God. If you invest time, energy, you will see the hand of God in miraculous ways. In miraculous ways. But we have to invest the time. If you want to reap, you have to sow. That's right. You have to sow if you want to reap. You have to sow. And I said prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. I don't mean a 40-day fast. If God gives you the grace, do it. You can fast 40 days. God bless you. But just baby steps. If it means missing a meal. And then talking to God over that period. If it's the lunch time and the job, if the only place you got is your car, get in the car. Say, Lord, I need your help. Sing a few songs. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Have a service in your car. Have a service in your car. That's right. And be consistent. You'd be amazed at what God will do when you start to prioritize God. Thank God for coming here Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But that's not enough. We come here to get the tools. Get the tools. Because we spend more time away from here. Amen? So these things need to be part of our lives. At home, on the job, wherever we go. We're constantly thinking, praying, interceding for our brothers and sisters. Because this message is not just about us. It's about God's plan, God's agenda. You're fasting and praying for someone who is in need. You never know what your prayer and fasting will do for that person. You don't have to brag. Like the Lord says, whatever you do secretly, God will reward you openly. God will reward you openly. The important thing is we need to have a plan. And we need to have a place. You have to have a plan and a place. And recognize that when you pray, it's not just about you. It's about others. And the main thrust is your spiritual growth. That's the main point. Lord, help me. Strengthen me. I want to be strong. I want to shine for you. I don't want to bring shame upon your holy name. That's why we're praying. That the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing will be added to you. Yes, it's not about give me this, give me that. About Lord, help me. I want to bear the fruit of your spirit. The love, the peace, the joy. And all the others. Lord, I want to be a replica of Jesus on earth. I want to be filled with your spirit. Till everyone shall see Christ only, always living in me. <coughs> That's the goal of the prayer. Yes. Because if you want to bring glory to God, you need to be filled with His Spirit. Amen. Not flesh, <coughs> with His Spirit. Amen. Not evil spirits, but His Spirit. Yes. Yes, sir. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of love. Amen. The Spirit of grace. Amen. The Spirit of supplication. The Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of knowledge. The Spirit of understanding. Amen. The Spirit of the fear of God. Yeah. The spirit of the fear of God. So prayer will change your life. Prayer will change my life. 
And prayer will change the life of people that we encounter. Remember Cornelius, you know? Cornelius had a visit from God through the apostles. It's kind of amazing in Acts chapter 10, the, the Bible says his prayers came up to God. His prayers on his arms. So God listens when we pray. He listens when we pray. God wants us to pray, intercede for one another. God wants us to be thankful. God wants us to confess our sins to God. That God will often use a pure vessel, a clean vessel. And God wants to clean us up. God wants to clean us up. And one of the tools is by praying, becoming real with God, asking him to forgive, forgive us our sins. But it's hard to go far with God if all we're doing is sitting, 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 sitting. When we come before God, we have to recognize that He's a holy God. Yeah. Yeah. He's a holy God. You know? There's a passage I believe is in 1 Kings somewhere. Ahab did a lot of bad things. And God sent the prophet Elijah to him. And prophet Elijah proclaimed judgment on Ahab. Ahab heard what the prophet said and he humbled himself. He fasted and he prayed. Do you know what the Lord did? The Lord said, oh, Ahab humbled himself. God postponed the judgment. God postponed it. It's in 1 Kings 21, chapter 21 or chapter 22. God postponed the judgment. So I don't care what you've done. If you get a hold of God, God is able to intervene. Even the legal system. I've known people who, based on what's on paper, five years, ten years, and they get hold of God and start praying and start fasting. And cases get dismissed. So it's amazing how God can help. I'm not saying he changes every situation. But unless you put him to test, you'll never know. You just never know. So that's why it's important to pray and to fast on a consistent basis. I mean, God won't be asking too much of us if we purpose to fast every poor. I mean, that's just being serious, being real with God every three months, whether it be a meal or two meals in one day, and just spend time with God. Say, Lord, help me. Give me direction for the next three months. Help my family. Help me on the job. Help my church. Pray for a pastor. Pray for these men so that they can hear from God and do his will. You'd be amazed at what God can do. Because like I said earlier, God's perfect will is not always being done. But as we pray, God is able to align everything, our thinking, our actions, so that at the end of the day, his perfect will is accomplished. Not his permissive will, but his perfect will is accomplished. And like I said earlier, you go from repentance to redemption to rejoicing. House of prayer. House of power. House of praise. Because ultimately that's what it's all about. Living a life of praise to God. In our conversation, in our conduct, in our character, in every way, making decisions in line with the scriptures, in line with the scriptures. Now, to live this Christian life, we need the power of God. We need the power of the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. So as we pray, the Lord endure me with power from on high, so I can live this life. Even as I go through tests and trials and tribulations, Lord, help me to stand. Because those that endure to the end will be saved. Yes. Those who make it to the end. And trials and tests and tribulations, trouble, is a big challenge if you want to make it to the end. But if we're praying, God will give us the grace. Or to use the term of a famous politician, God would give us the stamina, the stamina to make it to the end. 
Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith. And we are called to walk by faith. Not run by faith. Not jog, but walk by faith. One step at a time. Because God does not give grace on credit. He gives it to you when you need it. That's why it's a walk. Walk step by step. Step by step. Step by step. Everybody knows. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever comes to God must believe that he is. He is our savior. He is our supplier. He is our deliverer. He is our baptizer in the Holy Spirit. He is our soon coming king. He is our provider. He is our provider. Whoever comes to God must believe that he is, he is real. He is the supreme one. He is the sovereign one. He is the all-sufficient one. His grace will always be sufficient. Whatever you need, his grace will be sufficient. If you receive it. But if you start doubting and pouting, it won't benefit you. But his grace will always be sufficient if you receive it. Whoever comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a reward of them that diligently seek those that press in in spite of opposition they press in, they press in those that diligently seek in other words we cannot be casual I said yesterday if you become casual if you are casual about the things of God you will become a casualty if you are casual about the things of God you will become a victim but God wants us to be victorious God wants us to be victorious. And that will happen when we make prayer a serious priority. A serious priority. And once again, Jeremiah 33, 3, call upon me. God says, and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things. You did not know. Great and mighty thing. He's still the God of signs and wonders and miracles. Yes, sir. But we have to take the first step. Amen. If you draw near to God, He will draw near to you. If you draw near to God, He will draw near to you. It takes more than church attendance. That's wonderful. It takes more than tithing. But that's wonderful. But until you start praying, seriously, and living right. It's hard for God to get his glory in your life. Moses prayed, Lord, show me your glory. That's prayer. That's prayer. Lord, show me your glory. Lord, I desire your tangible presence in my life. And that takes prayer. His tangible presence. And in the presence of the Lord, there is joy. In the presence of the Lord, there is peace. In the presence of the Lord, there is contentment. So the missing link in our body of Christ experience may be prayer. May be prayer. God is challenging you and I to pray and fast. Not only to pray fast, but to pray and fast. So there's a big difference. Prayer and fast. Not praying fast, but prayer and fast. Let's try the Lord and let's see what God will do. Yes, sir. God wants to help you. God wants to help you. That's right. I cannot uh, state this enough. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Right. It will make a difference in your life. A right. huge difference. Because we are called to live supernatural lives. Your life ought to be different than a non-believer. Ought to be different. Because <coughs> if you see a child of God, you have to be more stable in your life. Kind of, kind of get bent out of shape when bad things happen. Because you have a shepherd. And whose report shall we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. But if you're not praying, you will be a weak Christian. Low energy. Words of a famous politician. Low energy. Weak. But God wants us strong. God wants us to have stamina, strength, so that when we go through stuff, 
we don't lose hope. We have our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So I want to remind us that God loves us so much. He has a wonderful plan for you and I. Wonderful plan. But we have to pray. And this plan includes trouble. I'm not going to stand before you today and say, oh, everything's going to be okay. I'm not going to say that. The scriptures don't say that. There will be tough times. There will be rough times. But God's grace will be sufficient. And if we pray, there are times when God will give us advance notice of things that will happen. Like I said earlier, there are things that prayer will not change. And there are things that prayer will change. But we have to keep on praying. Since we don't always know the difference, men ought to always pray and not faint. There's a reason why God said that. To always pray and not faint. And one of the key prayer petitions is, Lord, lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. Because whether you believe it or not, there is an evil one. The devil is real. The devil has common sense, has wisdom. But the good news is the devil is resistible. You can resist the devil. But to resist the devil, you're going to draw near to God. It's not by human might, it's not by human power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. And you tap in as you pray. God gives more grace. More grace, more grace. And nobody here is too weak to be strengthened by God. Nobody here is too weak to be strengthened by God. But I'm afraid some of us are too strong. Some of us are too prideful. Too prideful. By not giving God his proper place in our lives. Because if you're not praying, you're not giving God his proper place. I mean, just to make it, uh, to be blunt. If you're not praying, you're not giving God his proper place. You're right. You're not allowing him to get glory. You cannot walk in the spirit if you're not praying. It's impossible. If you truly want to walk in the spirit, we'll take prayer. And if you're not walking in the spirit, you're obviously walking in the flesh. The fact that something sounds good or looks good doesn't always mean it's God's will. Amen. And as you know, often the majority are wrong. Remember when they went into the promised land, when God sent 12 people ahead, 10 people came back, oh, it's impossible, we cannot, the two minute giants in the land, only two people came back with a positive report. And we know that God blessed them. So what am I trying to say? Psalm, uh, Proverbs 3. I'm going to close on this one. I think I've stood for too long. Proverbs 3. Uh, let's see. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. One way you can fulfill this is by praying. Because if you're not praying, obviously you're not trusting in the Lord. You're leaning onto your own understanding. Even though you may not say that, but that's what you're saying indirectly. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Prayer. If you're not praying, you're not acknowledging him. And he shall direct thy paths. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. The stops of a righteous man are also ordered by the Lord. Not just the steps, but the stops of a righteous man are also ordered by the Lord. And it takes prayer for the Lord to bring to your attention those stops. Because it sounds good, it feels good, doesn't mean that God is in it. Because it sounds good and it feels good, it does not mean that God is in it. But as we pray, your steps will be ordered. So will your stop. So may the Lord help us. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Amen.